Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Now before I get started with today's video, I just want to do a quick recap on last week's video because if you haven't seen it, last week's video, I was actually out of the office, out of this room, and I was actually filming in Bolton at Bolton Museum and Art Gallery, uh, looking at an exhibition for Tony Forster and Phil Grimshaw, who they were two incredible hand letterer and calligraphers who probably didn't get the recognition that they should have. Uh, so I thought it was an ideal opportunity to go and see some fantastic work by some of these analog designers. Um, and I thought I'd film it as well. So if you've watched the video, then you'll probably notice that I am a little bit more nervous than what I am when I'm filming here. But hopefully it didn't come across too much and you still enjoyed the video. Uh, if you haven't watched it, please go and check it out and give me some comments and feedback on how you thought that video went. Now, getting into today's video, I'm going to do another tutorial, another mock-up mock tutorial, um, and I'm going to show you how you can create a welcome mat effect so that if you do end up designing any welcome mats for clients or if you're just doing it for a personal project or anything like that, you be able to mock it up in situ and make it look as real as possible um, before, rather than before doing the final product, like making the product. So I'm going to switch to the Mac now and get started on this tutorial. So I've already created my welcome mat that I'm going to use and if you've got your own design then please feel free to use it. One thing I would say is just to put a black border around your design because that'll sort of emulate the realistic welcome mat because a welcome mat usually has a rubber black board around uh, so this will just help create that more realistic effect when we do bring it into Photoshop. So I'm going to highlight it all, copy, go into Photoshop. So this is the welcome mat, sort of how it's going to look at the end and I'm going to show you how you can create this. So hopefully you'll feel like this does look like a welcome mat, but I'll just turn that layer off for now and I'm just going to paste in the one that we've copied from Illustrator. And now you want to go to Edit, Transform, Distort. And using Distort you can tend to get more of a better perspective. I quite like using Distort to manipulate my images to put them in situ because I feel like you can get get it looking as real as possible. Luckily with this photo that I got off on splash.com I can use these lines that are running for the for the wood planks as a guide to give the perspective. And you just want to sort of make it look sort of as flat as possible and there we go I'm quite happy with that now if you do have sort of measurements and dimensions of photo, of the photo you can make it look more you can create it at the actual size but for the purpose of this I always just put a little disclaimer saying it's not to scale so if they do get it and they're like oh it looked like it was bigger in the photo then that's your mitigation uh, for anything like that but if you do have a photo or you've been able to take a photo of the area where it's going just take a quick measurement so that you can then design off that so say this area here so each one of these was 40 centimeters then you'd know then that that's going to be roughly a meter in width but anyway so getting back to the tutorial once you've got your map laid out just want to add a quick drop shadow to it uh, again you mess around with this but you don't want it too much you just want a slight drop shadow to make it look a little bit lifted off the ground and then what we can do now is go into filter noise add noise I just want to add Some noise. So you want quite a bit to begin with, but don't worry, it won't end up looking like this. 
and you just want to make sure you've got monochromatic switched on and distribution to uniform. So now we've got that, we want to go to filter, filter gallery, and you just want to go down to your texture folder, click grain, and then grain type as enlarged. Now once you've done that, you can mess around with the settings to find something that you're quite happy with and that looks more like a woolen textured effect. So I'm fairly happy with that. So I'm just going to click OK and then go back to filter, noise, add some more noise, but just lower it down a bit. And then click OK. So as you can see, I'm just going to edit, transform and distort this again, just to sort of try and match it to how that looked. So now we've got the welcome map, what we need to do is click Command Shift to highlight it all and I'm going to click an adjustment layer of brightness and contrast. I'm just going to take down the brightness and contrast. It's just to try and help it blend in with the photo, obviously, so it looks more realistic. And there we go. And then once I've done, I'm happy with the sort of the dark colour, the dark tone that we've achieved. I'm just going to duplicate the layer, the adjustment layer, and then I'm just going to increase the brightness, keeping the contrast the same so that the contrast is the same with throughout the brightness and the darkness. And I'm just going to click it brightness. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because there's just an element of a bit of a brightness coming from, from these lights here. So I just want to capture that in that top section. So once I've got that there, I'm just going to go over to the brush and you want to choose a soft brush with zero hardness. Change your fill colour to black. Make sure you're on the layer that you've just brightened. And then we're going to take out some of the brightness from the top and gently ease it into that lighter colour around the bottom like so actually that was a bit too much so i'm just going to do it again there we go now you can adjust these layers even further so if you feel like it needs a bit more brightness or a bit more darkness you can do and again it's just playing around with it all and just getting it to look as much as in situ as possible and that's sort of it basically so I hope you've thought that this looks more like a textured welcome mat rather than the like rather than just putting a um, flat image into there and just saying it's a welcome mat this gives it a bit more texture and helps create more of a, a visual representation of how it's finally going to look so that's how you can create a welcome matte texture and mock up in Photoshop so that you can send it to your clients and give them the, the best possible visual of how it's going to look before you actually produce it. So I hope you've liked this video and you found it useful. If you have, please comment below and give me a thumbs up because it will really help me out. And if you didn't like the video, still comment below because I'm happy to take on any feedback as always to improve on the videos improve on the content and the quality of these videos. So I'm going to leave it there, tune in for the next one, 
and I'll see you.